Today on the EMBN show, we're going high, we're going wet, and we're going freezing cold. We're going to be looking at how to prepare yourself to ride in the more extreme conditions. Yeah, it's not just your bike, it's your body you need to take care of as well out there on the mountains. All coming up in this week's EMBN show. When it comes to e-biking, loads of us like to ride high up in the mountains, and of course, that means being prepared, right? Absolutely. Now, a lot of us live in harsher climates and environments than we do here in the UK, and every week we get in images from all over the world, from such places as Alaska, from Norway, from the Ronda Valley. Ronda? It's hot there, isn't it? No, not Ronda in Spain. Ronda. Ra. On the fr fr freezing, isn't it? Well, it can be freezing there, but seriously, uh, you know, away from you southern fair weather bikers, there's you know there's some conditions there which need preparing for. And um, what are the basics you think when it comes to colder, wetter, higher climates? We're talking bike and body here, right? Yeah, totally. You know, we've been in some pretty harsh conditions this year, mm -hmm. and most of the time, it's actually been the body which is needed taken care of around the bike. Those yeah. e-bikes e that we've had, they've been through hell and high water this Literally, last 12 yeah. months. I, do, I tell you what though, salt water. Mm -hmm. Salt water on e-bikes is not, not a good, good. idea. No, so no. definitely uh, try and avoid salt water. But first of all, Chris, let's talk about, let's talk about the body and how to look after the body mm -hmm. when, you, when you, you might be in the mountains and you come across it all of a sudden, you're high up and the weather changes instantly. You need to be prepared when you're in a position like that. So yeah. I think I always, I'm always got a bag with me yeah. with, all with kit, right. with all the essentials prepared for that changing condition. So I think number one is actually gloves. Gloves, got to be, yeah. Gloves. Sort of waterproof, windproof options. They yeah. tend to be a bit bulkier, but they're definitely going to do a well, good do job. Well, you know that? You can, actually get, uh, you can actually get thinner right. wind, wind stopper gloves. Now, wind stopper is a really good material. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the, the you know warm gloves do not have to be big and bulky. They can be uh, pretty thin at the same time. So gloves is key. Yeah. Feet. Take care feet. of your feet. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I always wear wellies. Right. I love you. And there's a reason I do that. I'm being yeah. totally serious. Here, is that I, I my feet keep, keep um, warm mm -hmm. and dry. Uh, you know, apart from when it's absolutely tipping it down, the yeah. water gets in. But uh, what about socks? Now, I'm a big one for socks. I love wool socks. Mm -hmm. Merino socks. Merino Come socks. Back I think... to the footwear thing, I'll probably go for. Uh, I like my overshoes when it becomes really <laughs> rain. It's a roadie style thing, but they actually yeah, do them okay. for flat pedals. Neoprene overshoe, 510 underneath, like an Elements one as well. So you keep keeping dry. Yeah. What about jackets? Now, now a jacket, I think. We all take jackets. Mm -hmm. Don't know what what time of year it is. Now, the thing with jackets, I was out with Blake from GMBN last week, and he had a big bulky jacket on. And then denim jacket. It Probably. wasn't a denim jacket, no. And I I took it off, and he put my jacket on at the time. Yeah. And it, he was like, he's like, what? Put that on, and all it was is, is super thin. I mean, this this is the actual jacket, and you can see that actually packs down to to a hand's worth. Now, I think again. Wind stopper. It's an amazing, amazing uh, material, and I always use that with just just a base layer, a good quality base layer, um, normally synthetic base layer, and that that surprising how cold conditions you can go down to yeah. when yeah, just that yeah. and um, yeah, super thin. Um, however, that is not going to uh, prepare you well enough if you happen to have to stop uh, out on the trail now. Myself and Josh behind the lens there, we were stuck on a mountain in Scotland with horizontal rain and we were freezing cold, right Josh? Certainly were. And in those conditions, you actually need something a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing better than packing into your backpack, remember a backpack's essential, packing in a Primaloft, or Primaloft, however you pronounce it, jacket. Now, um, this is one, it's, it's been through, this has been through hell and high water. Again, it can really pack down well, and if you get a really good one, they can last for months without smelling. That's that. That is my piece of gold, which I pack into my backpack every ride I go on over more than a few hours. Chris, we've talked a lot about um, our bodies. What mm -hmm. about the bike? You really need to think about the power that that bike's going to be using as well. On those big wintry rides, that battery's really going to take a beating. So if you are lucky enough to own a spare battery, I strongly suggest taking that with you out on the ride. And what? there's thermal sleeve as well, can it help keep uh, temperature in that battery as well. So one question: one why, on. why is the bike going to take a beating in harder conditions? Maybe you're getting tired. You're sticking it in higher power modes. That 
trail conditions can be a lot sloppier and yeah. wet and headwinds gonna, yeah headwinds yeah. and just that temperature as well affects that battery one of the big things i think that helps you out on the trails is a mud guard oh, really it's God. like the best thing you you know it might make your bike look a bit weird but they're actually really really good at keeping you and your bike dry clean it's not a fashion well, show Chris. i know I, i'm a big advocate <laughs> of mud guards i'd stick biggest ones on possible right i mean i, I, I yeah, i'm with you i'm totally with you mud guard probably number one eyewear is mm -hmm. probably on there as well yeah. because Upon it's being out in the mountains, you can't see where you're going. Totally. Honestly, they're absolutely invaluable. That was interesting what you said about a neoprene liner for batteries. I've yeah. seen those, I think Bosch have got them for definite. Yeah. Um, when we were down in South of France earlier with Kieran, who Kieran Page, who works for Lapier, does a guiding mm -hmm. business down there, uh, he actually puts foil around his battery oh, in right. winter to keep it warm. That's a very good idea, actually. Yeah, riding in colder, wetter, higher environments do need a little bit more preparation than you would in drier climates. And I think that's the great thing about e-bikes is you know we do tend to go into these places, Definitely. tend to take it, get ourselves in these positions. So yep. if you're going to be doing it over the winter, make sure to be well prepared. In the news this week, we've got a mix of racing and also adventure. And I think adventure really is where e-biking is at, a big right? part of it. So we've just heard that on the 25th and 26th of July, 2019, in the Alta Valtellina region of Northern Italy, there's a e-mountain bike experience. And it starts at around 2,000 meters. It's a two day event on dirt tracks, technical terrain, in the Stelvio National Park. So I reckon that's a really that's good like one to look forward to. Get signed up for that now. Sounds like a great event. Meanwhile, back in the dirt and wet of South Wales, there was uh, an e-bike race uh, with Chris Roberts and his crew. And his interesting point here is that they had weight categories mm. in the e-bike race. And, world's uh, first, apparently, wasn't it? World's first. And yeah. I think this is a really, really good mm. idea because having done lots of head-to-head uh, -head hill climbs, you know, someone who's... 60 kilos and someone who's 90 kilos with the same skill they could be like two minutes apart on a on a on say a 500 foot hill climb so yeah. uh so this is what happened they did some good entries there and um look forward to more of that racing chris all right it's time for tech of the week and steve's found something pretty special yeah well chris i was thinking about you really because how are you going to cope when your kids get older mm -hmm. and you want to be going e-biking with your kids? That's right. And there's not that many e-bikes for kids on the market. No. But I've spotted this one from Brinker Bikes. Uh, oh. 1,599 euros. It's got 24-inch wheels. It is a hub drive, but then, you know, when they're starting off, they probably you know need, need a hard tail or something like this. But yep. I thought it was quite a good little bike. Camo green, a, yeah. yeah. Camo green. It's got a Bafang motor Army on style. it. Yeah, loving that. Yeah, so there you go. What That's price my, is that? That's, like I said, 1,599 Ooh. euros. So that's my contribution, Chris. I know it's Christmas to my tech of the week. We've all been there. Your mate's crashed. He's hobbled off. He's gone to hospital. You are left out on the trail with two bikes to take back to the car. How on earth are you going to ride your e-bike with another bike too? You haven't got four sets of legs and four arms. So you've got to ride your bike to your mates. This is how you're going to do it. First up, get your bike, get it all set, get that power mode dialed in, get that gear selection right, so you're not going to be messing around too much with the controls. Get the bike on which side you prefer, obviously if you've got your stronger arm on your right, you prefer that bike on the right hand side, vice versa. Just bear in mind which brake you're going to have, because you're only going to have one hand on the handlebars this whole time. Get everything set, get your seat where you want it, grab that bike by the stem, that way you can steer that bike as well. You've got kind of like a brake with your arm as well for that bike which starts to get out of control. Get it set, good cranking, get that gear going and you're away. So it's time for Get It Tech, and this week we're looking at bash guards because seen a lot of people that want to protect their motors and batteries on their e-bikes from damage. Uh, first of all, it came to my notice that uh, Paul Hunt um, of Pedal Hounds events in the south of England, uh, he made this adapted uh, alloy bash guard for the front of a specialized Levo. And then we came across this one, Chris, mm. for, which protects a, uh, a Merida. Meridus Shimano. Yeah, it looks quite good, like a nylon style one as well. So yeah. it's gonna slide a lot easier than the aluminium versions. But do you know what I'm thinking? What's up? Do you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking you shouldn't really be going bashing into trees mm -hmm. and logs and rocks on yep. your e-bike. Now, I know you're going to get a lot of rock strikes in that area when you're riding in the mountains, but I think I, I wouldn't actually go out there 
and you to try to use a e-bike like you would say a trials bike because it's a totally different tool it's, yeah, and it's obviously we've got chris smith here who can actually show you how to get over logs without using the bash guard right <laughs> yeah definitely i think it's a bit more of a protection rather than an actual tool that you'd actually use as part of the bike i think it's mm -hmm. quite a vulnerable area steve mentioned a lot of shock if you know if you're smashing that into rocks a lot of shocks can go through those mm -hmm. electrical contacts shake stuff and bash motors around probably isn't the best idea but, but you know what i i've actually i mean so it's a great idea mm -hmm. if you're going in extreme conditions but you know yeah. i've ridden a lot of the e-bike brands and they're pretty well protected in that area yeah i've never broke a battery or a motor case yeah. and i think there you go if you want some added protection Get on there's it. some options there for you to check out so it's time for climb of the week and this week is from north canterbury and andrew and his friend on a levo and a giant mm. trance climbing up to 1600 meters over 8 k's this is a nice place, Chris. Yeah, second attempt, apparently, they tried to get a Mount 5. First yeah. attempt, they had the bikes in turbo, and they're 300, <laughs> 300 metres shy on, of the guys. summit. Come on, guys. Come on, schoolboy era. So second go, they got there just using all the different levels as required, and they made it to the summit. It looks a hell of a ride, doesn't it? Mount 5. Look at that. Yeah. Amazing. Bananas. Co yeah. Cooking those rotors on the way down by the look of the pictures as mm -hmm. well. So in the comments this week, we had a lot of feedback from last week's show um are e-bikes good for fitness but that wasn't the topic the topic actually was do e-bikes make you unfit which is quite different certainly different but very different definitely and this one in from mvh808 it's not rocket science use a heart rate monitor and work out in your ideal training zone whether e-bike road bike or run-in same rules apply the e-bike simply allows you to stay in your ideal heart rate zone during the whole ride well nice i'm glad somebody <laughs> picked up on the facts there uh, this is from it. viking 84 uh, depends on how you ride have a look at the best enduro motorcycle riders they have to be stupidly fit and they aren't pedaling at all yeah, totally right there. Definitely some of the strongest athletes out there. Yeah, and motocrossers too. Uh, Mozzie Mike, if you're out cycling, then you're winning, no matter how you ride. Chris is a good one from OBC. There is no way that riding an e-bike would ever be detrimental to your fitness. And if ridden with the same or more gusto than to a non-e, you'll be able to go farther, longer and faster with less wear on your body while still achieving a peak workout. I feel my e-bike rides more in my muscle fibers and less in my joints, joints and tendons. Definitely, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Mezzi, Mr. Ezzy. Mr. Ezzy. E-bikes give you better upper body strength for totally. fitness on the downhill trails as they're heavier to move around. Totally agree with that. I, mm. Every downhill run I come out of, I'm like, yeah, it's mm. actually harder going down than sometimes yeah. it's going up. I yeah. think, you know. And if you're, and, and your, your heart rate's going to be probably higher. Yeah. Yeah, if you're doing 10 of those a day. And we're spinning on a different axis this week in Where on the World, the Plastic Globe. Brings us to Mam Tor. God, we put some money on this, can we? Mam Tor in the Peak District. Yeah, we've got this one in from Chris. Hi guys, loving the shows and videos, especially this special 350 pound bike up oh, Snowden. God, thanks for reminding us about that. Just thought I'd send in a picture of me with the giant and my brother and friends out on the e-bike for an adventure up and along the ridge of Mam Tor and around mm. the Hope Valley. Must take you down the Beast Trail near Lady Bar sometime, you'd love the it. The Beast. My bro was a pure analog cyclist until I got him out on an e-bike. Now he's got one, some fantastic climbs and mega Isn't trails. that where they filmed the Dam Busters down there? It is. Lady Bower. Isn't it? I thought Lady Bower that was a like dried great, out reservoir. Looks like a great ride that, guys. So oh, cool. keep sending those photographs in where you've been on your rides with your mates, where you've been by yourself. Yeah. Uphill, downhill, wet weather, dry weather. Could be you on send next them week's in. show. Keep send them sending in. them in. We'll get them on the plastic spinning globe. Competition time! Yeah, our lucky Park Tour comp winners, uh, it's all been drawn. Your lucky winners are Wayne Smith, Stephen Potzik, Roger Melendez. Just keep an eye out for an email coming to you asking for your yeah. details. And we'll Wayne, oh, Steve, and Roger, Park nice one. one. Yeah, good well work, done. guys. Well done. Now, it's a hectic week again on the EMBN channel, and coming out on Sunday is a feature that me and Chris did on Hardtail versus full suspension. How hard can you push that hardtail? And at what point does the hardtail get overtaken by full suspension? What else have we got? Also gonna be taking a look at getting you guys in the air nice and safely too. No, no, Those no, no, common no. jumping. Yeah, these guys these the guys because you won't catch me in the air <laughs> getting you in the air safely so it's all those common jump mistakes as well we've done a nice video on that that's coming out is it a jump mistake too. not to get in the air yeah i think it's your main mistake why do you, you need to be in the air one. it's cool isn't it 
cool, mm. I'm going to be crying. I'm going to have fun in the woods. <laughs> All depends. If you're going to jump in, check it out. I've come fully prepared this week, Chris. You can see I'm decked out. GMBN head to toe. Yeah, if you want actually, to look like this Steve. Is a GMBN hat. But you can get these in GMBN colours and EMBN colours. What do you think? I think the I think the black one's probably nicer. Yeah, we've got some special offers on as what well in the yeah. in the shop. That's good. Yeah, yeah, liking it with the black writing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, a few yeah. special offers going on in the shop as well. So be sure check that out. Beanies, puffer jackets, t-shirts, race jerseys, you name it. It's all in the shop. Okay, it's that time of the week where you guys find out whether you're gonna be abused or not by sending your bike in to the bike vault. Let's get into it. We've got this one here from George on his high bike from R7 in Sosco. I've actually been there and sat on that actual wall, Steve, in ice cream. Do you know what? That makes me very happy that there's e-bikes in Sospel because the yes. trails in Sospel Amazing. are next level. Mm -hmm. That has got to be a super. super nice. Got this one in from Mark. A uh, high bike Estuary 47 LT. Swindley Forest. Yeah, thought you might like to see a used bike in the vault for instead of all the sparkling clean ones in there. Really? I thought they're, they're all pretty dirty in the bike vault, aren't they? That's look good and he's been out on it. Right. I'm going to give him a super nice as well, I think. <laughs> I'd have held back on that one. But there you go. Ooh, next up, this is from Nate or Nat, a jam squared factory in the Malvern Hills, Tracy Mosley territory. What a fantastic place to ride an e-bike. Some great network of bridleways there. That's uh, that's really nice, I think. What are we thinking, Ed, Steve, on that? But I just said, that's really nice. Moving on. Nice. Ooh, ooh, crikey, Marida E160 in Israel. Looks good, out in the desert as well. Mm. Salt Trail? Sugar yeah. Trail, I mean. Sugar Trail, riding uh, trails. Hall Hallelujah and Watermelon. Nice, Hall oh, crikey. Hallelujah. Can you imagine anything bad going riding Hallelujah I think watermelon? Wa watermelon out in the desert. Sounds Yay. good to me. Super nice. Oh, nice. Whoa, sunset. Big sunsets going on. This cool, summer, that's, a, yeah. that's a vintage cube, that is. Yeah, so this is from Harry. It's cube stereo and Wakerley Woods. Just about to finish my ride. It's got a nice crikey, sunset. Crikey, Harry, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's that's a few years that, old that cube isn't it? I remember uh, riding one of them in Boston, 2013 I think. Mm. Uh, Harry, Harry, get back to us with that bike. I'd like to um, nice come and do a, a closer look at that bike actually. But what are you thinking? Uh, super nice. Super nice. <laughs> whoa, another sunset picture. As I said, a lot of people. This is mm. like whoa. I, I wouldn't mind a nice style. Huh? Catalogue oh, style. Yeah, yeah, I like well, that. Chris is getting away with a big talk here. Josh is very busy on his telephone. Specialised Levo, FSR, concentrate. Ridgeway and Wiltshire. Nipped out on the new Levo for a quick afternoon blast, but end, ended out staying till sunset. 34 miles. This is your territory, isn't yeah, it? Wiltshire? Yeah, it's nice. I want to give that one super nice as well, I think. Give them away. Oh, come on, come on. Lake District Pivot Shuttle Explorer Ambleside. Yeah, easy, super nice. <laughs> this one's in from Dan on his Bulls E-Stream, North California, taking 14 year old Blue out his dog in his dog carrier on the back of his bike. Do you know Good what I'm thinking there, Dan? I'm mm. thinking, won't that bike stand up by itself? You've got someone holding the bike there. That is so close to being a super nice. That's so close. The ultimate thing is carry it out. Yeah. I want to see the front wheel. I want to see. I want to see you in the photograph. So dog send it back in. I want to see. See, yeah. Send it in. It's a nice for now. Oh, wow, nice new Norco site here from Jimmy. Oh, beauty, Brisbane. beauty, beauty. Oh, Look Australia. That. Oh, it's a nice colour in it. Uh, he's got. Uh, ironically, he says he's got bad sight as well, and the bike's called the sight. So he's, uh, I'm a, unable to drive legally at this stage. So I needed something to get around on. So he headed for the e-bike, a perfect all-rounder. Oh, great. Hold on. Sorry. Whoa, whoa. Hold, hold your wheelchair horses. That is a super, <laughs> super nice. Oh, look at the puppy. That's going to be Wales. Or oh, Hamsterly. Hamsterly forest. Cube stereo. Oh, look at the puppy. What's the puppy called? Ted. Ted. Oh, Cube spaniel. Ted. Nice. Cube stereo hybrid one. Josh, what do you reckon? Is that nice or super nice? Super nice. Super nice. You owe right. Josh a beer. Boom. Well, free ride land. I've moustache. Been there. I've been there. Free ride zone. Ian Moustache Sunday Race 8 from Bishop's Cleave. Mm -hmm. Just across the golf course there. Mm -hmm. Out for a favourite local free ride at Bishop's Cleave for some mm -hmm. quarry action and fun times. Quarry action, e-bikes. Got to be a super nice, right? 
And that's it. Rider. Out of the bike fault. Yeah, we're out. Oh, Keep so sending not in. too much abuse yeah. this week. No, You've I been know. very, very nice to everyone this week. Too many super nices going on there, but we love to see all your bikes here on the channel. Don't mm -hmm. forget to keep sending them in via the upload service. Mm -hmm. Details of that are down below. Check that one out. It's going to be harder up. next week. It's going to be way harder. Super nices are running out. They're, so, yeah. But not running out. They're going to be more difficult. We're going to have some more rules coming in next week. And that's it for EMBN show this week. Uh, don't forget there's loads of other great videos out there mm -hmm. which you can tune into, particularly like the one where Chris shows you how to ride in the wet, quite appropriate for the Northern Hemisphere this time of the year. Definitely and a real cool video I saw this week as well was Blake shredding his e-bike at Windhill Bike Park, showing us how hard we can shred those e-bikes as well, going doing big backflips and doing loads of tricks like he usually does with all of his style, really impressive Just video. like yourself, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget you can like, share and subscribe to EMBN so we can keep bringing you some cool videos. Yeah. See you next week, bye.